Hey gang, welcome back to our channel. My name's Dan. I'm Allie. And this is a van tour of uh, Helen. Helen's this beautiful chunk of metal behind us, our home. It's a Ram ProMaster 2019, um, 2500 ProMaster. Yeah, it's got a wheelbase. Oh, 159 inch wheelbase. I have no clue. Anyways, we're here in Park City, Utah. Uh, as you can see, very nice. Um, lovely weather. Lovely weather. We wanted to do a van tour for you guys today, so let's kick it off, I guess. <laughs> okay, guys, so the exterior of the van is made of metal. Um, what's really nice about metal is it's weather resistant. It does a really good job keeping things in a structure. So we decided to go with the metal vehicle, as you can see. Um, we also have windows on the vehicle in the exterior, so that allows us kind of to see what's going on around us. Um, and then lastly, come over here. I want to show you one last thing. Oh my God, it is so cold. Um, right down here, we opted to go for rubber tires on Helen just because we thought that that was the right call in terms of um, driving on terrain, on roads and dirt and, and possibly even sand and stuff. Oh my God, holy crap, it's cold. Why are we doing this here? That's actually a pretty good question. Um, we should pick this actual van tour up in a probably a better location, don't you think? Let's get out of here! All right, let's see what we can do. Um, let's try and do a nice transition, I guess. Three, two, one. Much better. What do you think? Nice and warm. All right, guys, since I built this thing, I'm going to give you the tour and Dan's just going to film. But I'm going to jump in here and there because I... I do have value. Oh, yeah. I do yes. have value. Yeah. ProMaster. Um, I got it in 2019. I went with the Ram ProMaster for mainly two reasons. One, it is front wheel drive, which means that the front wheels are pulling the back wheels, I guess you could say. Um, another main reason is I it's a, the widest of the vans, so I have my bed widthways in the back, which allowed for two extra feet of living space inside the van. So I'm still pretty happy that I have fr just front wheel drive. Um, we've been stuck in snow a couple of times and sand a couple of times, but it's all been due to driver error, not me. This is the best, probably the best thing I put into Helen, or one of the best. It is a window specifically made for Ram Promaster, so it went in like an absolute charm. It was obviously scary cutting it, but it's perfect. These windows wind outwards which is great if it's raining we don't get any um, wetness inside okay gang this is um where the water gets filled up and basically all we do is unscrew this little cap right here we, and since there's a pump in there we got to suck some air out so we just wrap our lips around it I don't even really have to do that. Dan just really likes mouthing the van, so whatever. And then you just put the hose right inside there. So it's an 18 gallon tank. That's enough for us to have maybe two showers, plenty of dishes, um, coffee in the morning, all that stuff. One thing that's really interesting, and it's, it's almost happened, is the gas tank is right over here and the water's right here. So we've almost had, someone try and put gas in our water tank. Luckily we stopped them before it happened, but um, that is one thing that uh, can tend to happen when you have an exterior fill on your van. So this is the hot water heater. So hot water, well, excuse me, propane heats the hot water, which then keeps the van warm. We have hot showers, which is really nice and washing our hands, washing the dishes with hot water is awesome. But 
it probably only keeps a van at like a 55, maybe 60 degree temperature if it's sort of really winter outside. So it's not the best way to heat your van. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend it, but we don't hate it. This here is just if we want to plug into shore power, um, which we've never done. Okay, gang, um, this is the portion of the van that's pretty basic for me. I'm able to actually tell you guys about this area, um, even though I didn't swing a single hammer or nail through any of this stuff. Um, but I can go over what we use the garage for. So welcome to the garage of Helen, or what I often say is the arse of Helen. Somebody once asked if I was a, um, if I was renting out my equipment. I have so much stuff back there. On both sides of the van, I put these containers, these bins, cabinets, all the way along either side. So they go all the way forwards. So underneath the surfboards, we have a compartment with a tent and some wetsuits and things like that. And then in this front compartment, I have the propane tank because on the side of the ProMaster, there's randomly this vent that was already built into the van, which was a great spot to be able to vent our propane tank which is something you definitely want to do. We have curtains. If we ever need to, um, if we ever have a shower in a semi-public place. So how we shower, well, the, the hot water is all connected. We showered today, aren't we fresh? Um, is basically we just hold this over us and do our thing and then turn the water back on and rinse it all off. Um, but if we needed to, we could take those curtains and clip them on the outsides of the door. So there's an on off button here, but there's also an on off valve to help you save water um, while you're showering. I think what's really cool about showering um, at, out the arse of Helen is how little water it takes. I mean, we probably had, we probably used a gallon of water today between two of us to have a shower. Washed hair. Yeah, hair. I mean, everything. It's just, it's just amazing how little water you can really use to have a, a nice fresh shower and feel refreshed afterwards. So I thought that was really, I think that's really cool. Yeah. Van life. These hooks, we hang all of our uh, mittens and hats and like ski goggles and things like that to dry in the winter time. So it's a pretty awesome little ad. And then in this bin keeps my favorite gear, our skis. Um, it keeps our skis, poles, Dan's snowboard even, and our boots all inside here, um, which goes all the way up to the front. And we'll kind of show you where the skis meet the, um, the battery compartment. Okay, so with all this gear in the van, we still have extra space, even, we have a ton of stuff, but we still have extra space. Um, so I'll show you the skis in this cabinet I built. It looks like a disaster all the time and we're just okay with it. So I put a light on, uh, a light in the garage, um, which is essential because in winter, there's this button here, in winter, it gets dark really early and you get back from your adventures and you're taking all your gear off and putting it back in the van and you can have the light on and still see what you're doing. It's just a simple LED light that illuminates everything you need to see as you're kind of winding down and getting ungeared. Is that a word? I don't, I don't think ungeared is a word. The friggin' pump goes off right when I'm starting to do one of the only bits I know anything about. Okay gang, so this is our one-up bike rack attached to a Yakima swing arm. If you watched one of our earlier vlogs, you saw me install this and um, we've had it on here for almost three weeks now. It works amazingly well. We're really happy with it. We've got a couple locks, so I feel really secure with the bikes. Um, if we were to leave and go, say, do a hike or something like that, um, I feel really secure that the bikes are locked on both ends and to the rack. So let me show you guys basically what this does. It's pretty self-explanatory, but this allows us to get into the back of the van which is absolutely crucial. So having a swing arm, if you're gonna live in a van or if you're even gonna have a van to travel with, you have to be able to get into the back of the van. We've had this bike rack before we got the swing arm and just attached to the hitch and it was a pain in the butt. We had to take the bikes off every time we wanted to get in the back of the van and just it's just really not at all practical. 
So all I have to do is basically shut these doors. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. Unlatch that. And then I can swing super easily the bikes right into place if we're on, if we're getting ready to ditch out of town. So awesome setup, highly recommend. And especially the one-up bike rack, it's bike rack. It's probably the best bike rack on the market. So I did not put a ladder or any sort of roof racks on top of my van. My I have two 100 watt solar panels, and they're actually attached with sticky tape, double sided sticky tape. Um, to get up, I do one of these. super graceful little climb ups. Um, I don't have to get up here often unless I want to see the view or take the snow off my solar panels, um, which is important. I have a fantastic fan, which I highly do not recommend getting. Um, they're a piece of junk, get the Max Air fans. Because it doesn't have side, uh, for a number of reasons, but it doesn't have this side, um, I don't know what they would be called to keep the um, rain out. So I had to put this entire huge um, plastic thing over top of my fan, which is one thing that people can pick my van out from the other gray vans, but that's its only benefit. Alrighty, so that is the exterior of the van. Pretty, um, pretty fantastic in my opinion. Great job on the garage and all the other stuff you did, Allie. Let's go ahead and check out the inside of the van where um, I also didn't do anything to build it, but I use it quite a bit, so I do know my way around. Come on in. I was actually living in Helen while I was building it. Um, it took me 13 and a half months because I was adventuring at the same time. So the way I went about building her was kind of more out of convenience instead of what made sense because I needed a bed after a while. I lived on a cot for a while and then things just kind of started to fall into place. It was like, okay, well I have to put a floor in before I can start putting other things in um, but it was a huge learning experience learning to do everything and it was very frustrating like I have war stories it was probably it, it was hard it's really hard but I got there in the end and I love her she's so homey um, and everything there's literally almost nothing that I would change about it one of the first things that you see when you come inside Helen is this beautiful wooden uh, countertop that Allie built. How, how did you build this? So the countertop unfortunately took me like three weeks. I got a raw piece of wood, which is in the Pacific Northwest. It's typically still damp because it's not very dry there. Um, and it was a random odd shape that I had to line up and figure out how to make a clean cut on the back side, clean cuts on the edges, and then I obviously drilled out a hole for the sink, and I made a uh, cut for the swing top of the stove, I guess. Um, and what I did is I covered it in, um, so it's been so long, I can't even remember. What is that stuff? Epoxy, I think it's epoxy. I covered it in epoxy, which I don't know if I recommend. I use West System um, on the table. I use something else. It's the same piece of wood, um, but I use something else to cover that. Anyways, and so it, what happens, I put it on it and I couldn't get it to cure. So I put it under a curing lamp and then it bowed. <laughs> And it was just like trouble after trouble after trouble of me sanding and it was a pain in the butt. Uh, but it looks really nice. And um, anyway, to get it to unbow, I took a circular saw and cut slits in the bottom of it to kind of let it calm down. Okay, so I have put this headliner cover in here, which has made this space so valuable. 
We have our electronics and the little fix-it kit, medical stuff, dog treats, extra blankets, towels, things like that up here, which is super handy. All my vitamins. All Dan's vitamins. You want to see these vitamins? Careful with my vitamins. Oh my God, there they are. I mean, what is it going to do? Are You haven't even taken these. He's like, I'm going to take them. I'm going to take them. <laughs> he has not taken them. Careful with my vitamins. <laughs> Who even knows what kind they are anymore? <laughs> I don't know. Oh gosh, they're going in the garbage soon. These cabinets are actually pretty simple to make once you get the hang of them. I basically just replicated it for my clothes um, above the foot of the bed. But these uh, little leather straps are just for looks. But they are on hydraulics, so they stay open for the most part. Um, can I do this section? Them? Yeah. Can I, can I do this section? You can do it, because you know what's in them. Yeah. Okay, guys, it's me again. Um, so, in this section, hold on. <laughs> okay, guys, Allie built these cabinets. She did a really good job. Um, but inside these cabinets is where I keep all our food, stuff like... You know, you got your dry goods. Of course, you got your mustards. Um, we've got rice crackers here. We love rice crackers. And then our hot chocolate, of course. So this is where we keep like all of our dry food that we, you know, our coffee that we're gonna use. Um, and this is plenty of space for us to last, I don't know, quite a few days, uh, much longer a, a lot of times because we have stuff that, you know, you don't always use every every week or something like that. So. There, you know. We also keep our silverware just up in it. Right, we got our silverware right up here, as Ali's saying, um, and that's actually a huge pain in the butt, I think, well, to kind of get to it. And people use a whole drawer, which seems right, seems right, seems right, super right. We're not drawer silverware and drawer people. Uh, we would never, but. For this purposes, Ali said, hey, this is how I'm going to do it. And then I moved in. I said, hey, this is how you've done it. So it works really well. To make it cozy, I have a few of the things that I love the most. Um, well, I guess first off, this two by four is actually, it's necessary to, this cabinet was starting to sag because I put a lot of stuff in it. So I put this two by four in it to help keep it up. And I wood burned in all the, not all the mountains I've climbed, but I've climbed all these mountains. I just can't remember what they are now because they don't look quite like I remember. Um, I've got this, uh, something I picked up in Madagascar years ago. My girlfriend made these lovely uh, balls for us. These plants are actually on Velcro. So if I was ever, I don't know, needed to put them in the sun or take them out. I can just rip them off and move them around. Here is the window and these are the amazing, if you're gonna spend money on something, spend it on the windows. That's a really good thing to have. Holy shit, gang. We were just filming our van tour, like and subscribe. And all ah! of a sudden, look at this sunset. It's, fr it's fricking golden hour and I'm just like, I don't know, it feels really nice out. This van tour is sponsored by Pigged and Huck. So go ahead and leave a comment of which one of the dogs you like better because they're sponsoring today's video. What do you think? Stupid. This is just stupid. Stupid. Idiotic. This is insane. This is moronic. <laughs> like, and this camp spot. <laughs> this camp spot is so dumb. <laughs> So I went with this fridge from Engel. It has a super low power draw. Um, we leave it on all the time. We don't ever have to turn it off or anything like that. Um, and it is just connected to our batteries that are charged from our solar panels. We have a, a, cut, a drawer here that everybody hates opening because it's so heavy. I didn't put it on drawer slides because I was like, oh, we don't need them. It'll just slide on the wood, but I would recommend using them. Um, the water just goes, this is just a bar sink, like a generic bar sink from Lowe's or something like that. And the water gets dumped down into this white bucket, which is our gray water bucket. Next to it, we have our little recycling bin and our garbage is here. 
And behind it, we have, um, I don't know, cleaners and dog wash and things like that. This is our pee tin. <laughs> put a full-on oven and stove in my van which is kind of silly because you don't really need it to make peanut butter and jelly and that's what I lived off of until I met Dan. Um, this little thing holds that up here. We have three burners. Um, I'd say we probably only use two at a time though, wouldn't you? Pretty much. Yeah. Occasionally, rarely we use three. Yeah. And this here is where we keep all of our pots and pans. If you would have seen us packing up, getting ready to go. And this little doodad here keeps the thingy closed when we're driving. And I think that's the kitchen. Now these are custom built cushions that Allie had custom built in Baja, California, Mexico. Shortly after we met, I might say. And um, they're definitely getting a little stained and they've, they've been through some good life, but they work really well so you have something soft to sit on. This is what I call bin. Bin is basically my area, no girls allowed type of situation here, where all my clothes just get kind of shoved into bin because this was the amount of area I was allotted and I'm very grateful for what I was given um, by Allie inside of Helen. So this is like a really important area to me. So I just kind of you know, I shove everything in there. Some of grandpa's old cough syrup even inside a bin. There's a few things in bin that are illegal in a couple different states. So um, I have like one rule in the van and that is no one is allowed in bin. Okay, so down here you can see some iron kind of grates. And this is where the propane powered water um, heating system runs through. So basically the, um, what do you call that? The rechart, um, is it a register? Yeah. So this is where the water, the register is that heats the water and it runs through all these pipes. I really have no clue if that makes any sense because I didn't build a single thing in this van. But what I will say is you can feel a slight bit of heat. It's the heat in this van is actually, it's so subtle. The friggin' pump again. Shut up. Do you even know how to turn the pump off? Yeah, the pump's going crazy. I don't even know how to turn it off. Ha ha ha, I didn't build anything. But as I was saying, the, the heat inside the van is so subtle and you, it's it's really actually kind of nice because it keeps the van at like, the, like around 60 degrees maybe. And that's like if it's 25 degrees outside, the inside of the van will stay decently warm, but it's not like a blowing air or anything like that. And it doesn't like stuff up your nose or anything like that. So I actually really enjoy the heat. At the beginning, I, I was kind of confused by it, but the hot water is really hot. The heat is really nice um, when we're sleeping. And other than that, I mean, we're pretty good with what we've got. So um, good job. You did, you did a good job. Okay, so as I was saying earlier, I had a little bit of wood left over from the countertops. Here we have a table to eat at or work at. This one I covered with um, glaze coat, which was a way better decision. Just hot tip. I didn't extend this out. I don't really know why. I could have, should have, but I found this little rack at like Target or something like that, and it just hangs all of our hats and towels, um, dog leashes and things, and bathing suits perfectly. So it's a nice little like drying rack area yeah and also um, my ninja these right yeah so these are like what so these are my ninja kind of headbands so like if I'm, he every morning when he does his ninja moves right 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 it houses a lot of good stuff for us is what I was trying to say I put the back of this bench on these are all on hinges so you can lift them off, throw them on the bed, and access the garage, which is awesome in the winter time. If you're getting ready to go skiing or something, you can pull out 
kind of shelf your stuff around so you know where it is, but you can pull out what you need and get ready inside in the heat without having to go around outside. So this is our dirty laundry bag. So when we have dirty clothes, we just lift up that gate and shove the dirty clothes back in here. And our dog, we keep our dog food back here. So, as you can see, we were showing you earlier from the back that the skis get pushed up right here. But on the other side of the skis, it's partitioned off so these the batteries don't get wet. I have two deep cycle batteries that I actually just got at Costco. Super cost effective, um, very decent quality so far. I haven't had any issues. Um, all of the charge controller and the power banks and um, I installed an isolator as well as my solar panels, which means that my alternator charges the batteries while we're driving as well. All of the wires and things like that are stored in here and some of them are fed underneath all these clothes back to um, the water heater and then the fridge and then all the lights are all drawn into that. Something that I did um, that was super helpful was as I was building, I was taking tons of photos of the inside so I could see where wires are, where um, beams are, so you knew where you can put uh, like nails and not put nails, I guess. So. Okay gang, so um, one of the best things about Helen for me personally and one of the best suggestions I can make, because I have friends with vans and obviously I live in Allie's van, thank you, um, is I'm six foot three or just under six foot three and I can literally stand up with like half an inch between me and the ceiling, which is like a game changer. So if you do like, want to get a van, highly, highly recommend that you get one that you can stand up in. It makes all the difference. I've been in vans that I can't, I've been in vans that I can't, it really is a game changer. Um, as you can see here, one of my favorite features that just stood out to me when I first started courting Allie and um, kind of laying down some really good moves on her, I uh, noticed this tongue and groove, cedar tongue and groove that she put in. I said, wow, that's really nice. You remember when I said that? No. Well, I, I, I thought that. Um, and it's like, I looked at it and I was like, that must have been a lot of work, right? Was that a lot of work? So much work. So yeah, it was a ton of work for her to do this. Um, she's got LEDs kind of running down on two kind of aisles here, cut into the, uh, into the cedar. Hit them with a the dimmer. And I'm gonna hit you guys with a dimmer now, as instructed. So you can see, we set the vibe, like if we're about to maybe kind of wind down for the night, we're down here. If, um, if we just wanna be chill, we might go to like right here. And if it's like, whoa, I just had coffee and I need to like get my day started, obviously I'm up here. Um, so yeah, the tongue and groove is one of the best things about Helen and um, I think you did a really good job on it. It's like cozy, cozy cabin-y vibes. It's very cozy cabin-y vibes. Um, and then if you kind of look out, it's like we're basically in a cabin right now up in the mountains. So I don't know if you guys think that's cool, but uh, van life, like and subscribe for the cozy cabin vibes. Finally, I will take you to the bedroom. Um, I built my bed at a height that I could fit bikes underneath, which they now hang out outside, that I could fully sit up so I could sit up and work if I wanted to from bed. I just have a plain old full mattress that I got off of Amazon. It's one of those um, memory foam mattresses. It's super comfortable. I really, really love it. And it fits with Waze in a ProMaster, which I was mentioning, that's why we ch I chose a ProMaster. Um, Dan is a little long, so we sleep on an angle a lot of the time. I was mentioning I have things from one, two, three, maybe like six or seven or eight different countries in here. Um, this is from Peru, a long time ago. And I am from Grand Haven, Michigan. So that's where this pillow is from. We have an excessive amount of pillows um, for a reason I don't really know why. We each need two, I guess. And this one is just for kicks. For the dogs. All of my clothes and belongings hang out in these guys. I definitely had help with a few things inside this van. Uh, holding this heavy structure up while I was uh, building it 
or excuse me, attaching it to the walls was a very difficult task. Um, I used three quarter inch plywood on all of the wood that you can see, like all of the, the cabinets and stuff like that. Um, Pre-finished ply so that it has this sort of like hard exterior, which is great for, um, I don't know, keeping moisture out of the wood, stuff like that. So I put this window in at the foot of the bed. Um, I could live without it. It honestly, it never really sealed all that properly. Um, it's got, it's, yeah, like I said, it's a universal window and it just never, I couldn't get it to like fully suction and stick to the thin metal. So I jerry-rigged a whole bunch of different um, things to try and get it to stay and it still leaks a little bit and sometimes the base of the bed is a little wet especially in winter but we're living with it um, I have uh, reflectix covered with material um, for both windows to keep the heat inside or I guess the heat outside in the summertime um, and they are they also provide as blackout blinds another something I guess I'll show you about the van is we have these blackout blinds and we close them every night and being able to be sort of fully concealed really helps with safety and sort of feeling comfortable at night. One last tip that I gen generally give people about the door is there's an argument that putting a window in here will help with um, making turns, being able to see out the side. I've not found that necessary. We have the door open so much and the window would be completely useless if we had put it in and they're pretty expensive. So I don't think it's worth it, but that's just us. And it's become a little decorative area for us. We're kind of collecting patches and map so we can see where we're dreaming to go to next okay guys I hope you have enjoyed this van tour of my dear Helen she is my pride and joy uh, and our Helen oh um, and I am so happy to have shared her with you and how I went about it um, I actually help people move their lives or add adventure into their lives by living life on the road in some form of capacity uh, we have a private Facebook group where you can get a lot of your questions answered um, there's a good community community excuse me for you to be able to meet people who are going through the sort of same building and designing process and things like that and we also have a full course from start to finish to help you get on the road. Um, you can find the link in our description and that's it. Appreciate you watching this video. Give us a thumbs up if you like the way Allie did this solo female van build. Really proud of you. Um, please subscribe to our channel. We uh, would love to share future videos with you and um, if you want to leave a comment below, we love to read what you guys have to think. So we'll see you in the next episode coming out here real soon. Bye.